Coach's Corner with Coach Heck and the infamous Coach Patrick King. You're stuck with me, man. I'm stuck. You are stuck with me. I ain't going anywhere. Um, there's a lot of people that are jealous of me for sitting here, and there's some people yeah, that, that there's a little sympathy going on at the same time. There's more people, people that are sympathy. Right 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 I got to say that right now. Ron, Ron, you know you're stuck in the state. 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 When I go, I go turkey. Oh, turkey. Get a picture. Get a picture. Get a picture. Get as many as you can. How long did you learn Larry Bird? 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 How long did you learn Welcome back. To, welcome well, back from Mexico. I made it through yeah, customs. I, I want to talk about that. I just, made it through customs. I'll talk about fine. that just for a minute because um, last week we did a show from <laughs> um, from Mexico uh, and uh, we had we had Pat on and we, we and we tried to tell Pat. Um, I mean, I mean, my feed and Scott's feed, everything was cool, but we tried to tell Pat stop drinking tequila about five, right? I, yeah, at I did. five, right. Okay. You know, I mean, that, I mean, that'll give you two. Five o'clock your time or my time? Yeah, we forgot to tell you which time. <laughs> which time zone? That's our fault. Now, honest to God, it, I was fine. It was all, I'm going to blame it all on Mexican technology. But uh, uh, no, I was perfectly uh, coherent. And I was waving that empty glass around, but you, you know, it made for yeah. a good prop. Yeah, no, I mean, and I, I didn't think anything of it. I swear, I thought you were really cool. But when, <laughs> but when we lost you for about ten minutes, and then I saw Pablo Escobar run, run across the screen. <laughs> looks like he was chasing. Did you I see I the thought, two military guys with I, the AK forties behind said, him? I said, man, there's some <laughs> wild stuff going on no, that's, in Mexico. No, but that's hey, all East Coast stuff. We'll hey, talk, we'll talk to Allison here in a little bit about the East Coast of Mexico. Uh, hey, but I will tell you, though, I will tell you, and I don't want to hear anything about it because what they always say is what happens in Mexico yeah. stays in well, freaking Mexico. Yeah, okay, okay. All right. That's, that's, all right. that's where it stays. I hope you had a great time. So don't ask me so I don't have to tell I you I hope you truth. had a great time. I, I have no idea why you, it looks like you got – a uh, 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 handcuff marks on both wrists, <laughs> but I'm not even going to ask you about some, it. I'm not bruises. asking you about it. Yeah, they, they use plastic handcuffs. Center, <laughs> okay, by the way. all right. Hi, by the way, <laughs> hey, uh, we're going to get started. We have a great show planned, and I'm going to talk to Allison Hayes. Uh, she knows everything about everything when it comes to athletics. She's she's great. She's a a plethora of athletic knowledge. And then at about seven thirty, we're going to talk to. Um, one of my really good friends and coaching Joey Luce, uh, and Joey Luce and Matt and Matt Painter have been best of friends for a long, long time. And and uh, uh, Joey is actually at the Final Four, and he'll be talking to us from from the arena tonight uh, at about seven thirty, which will be four thirty their time, right. and the game starts, I believe, their time at six twenty, maybe six twenty or six forty, something three, like that. Three hours behind us. Yeah. Yep. So. So he'll he'll give us some great knowledge and, and he'll kind of pass along uh, how how Matt Painter is feeling about this game tonight and and and, and Joe and Joe what what you know I mean I mean he'll have some great stuff for us tonight but before we get started uh, I, I want to uh, knock out our uh, a couple of our great sponsors Hunt Funeral Home the loss of a loved one can leave you with lots of unanswered questions and stress and Hunt Funeral Homes of Mishawaka they are there to help during a very 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 stressful and painful time in in, in a family's lives uh, they're located at 505 West A Street in downtown Mish you can call Pat Hahn the owner at 574-255-1474 they have a great great staff uh, at the, the, the wonderful Han Funeral Home. Uh, Tony Letcher Health Markets Insurance. Are you kidding me? Whether you need help with your health insurance or Medicare, it's time you get the right coverage for the right price. Call Tony at 574-307-8882 or visit his website at tletcher.com. Tony Letcher, 1995 graduate of South Bend Adams. Just missed you by a year. A couple of years, no, yeah, it's, it's 96, 97. Yeah, so, and as a matter of fact, he told me that if he would have been there when you came. That my he, check, 
he would have been your starting point. It worked. I, and we, we got we we have Allison rolling with us right now, man. I know. Allison, how are you? Hi. <laughs> We're just getting it figured out, but we got it now. Oh man, you sound you sound great. And and I and I heard uh, you spent some time down in Mexico too, maybe? I did. We just got back from Cancun and I've been to Puerto Vallarta and Cancun and I gotta say, I mean, you can't go wrong, right? If you're, you're going to Mexico, it's all good. Yeah, I, I, so. I love the water and the color in Cancun. And you know, it's funny, my husband would try to get me to go for years. And I was like, oh, that sounds like, you know, spring break 1982. No, thank you. <laughs> and he finally got me to go to it. And now we go as much as possible. I, I absolutely love it down there. Well, well, we had a show last week from Mexico. <laughs> and, and, so, and so we start our show at seven and, 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 and we told Pat, Pat, stop the tequila by about five, will you? Well, we forgot to tell him five our time. Oh. We, we got him on the show. He, he had to leave the show for about 10 minutes. Pablo Escobar was trailing behind him as we, 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 we couldn't find him. He's trying to take yeah. And Jose Cuervo was three steps behind him. Yes. Right? Stop. Yes. God. No, no. And I say, what happens in Mexico stays in Mexico, right? Hey. But I'm, 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 I'm a little curious why he's got the handcuff marks on both wrists here as we're doing the show. <laughs> I don't want you to talk about that. It stays in Mexico. Every, okay? you know, believe it or not, we had, we had a nice time. We stayed at a really nice resort uh, north of the airport and uh, safe as could be. Uh, you know, there's military around, but you feel safer with the military because you, we were by, in a gated community. And we, we went for walks every day right down the middle. They have a walkway bicycle path right down the middle of the four, four lane street there in the area. And uh, we took taxis everywhere. And, you know, you finally started to learn the, how much a peso was worth. So, uh, <laughs> I think this year it was actually pretty good. I think it was 14 pesos to a dollar because we've been there before when it was inflated up to 18 and 20. So I don't know if you changed your money over or not. but was- uh, We didn't. I, I think, I mean, we at one point we actually rode a city bus, which was an experience during rush hour. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I would uh, recommend that, but it was actually, it was really cool. And we, and we had our, our kids and everybody with us, Oh boy! but uh, we got some change in pesos. And then I was like trying, just trying to get rid of them before we left. Yeah. That's where you leave it with the housekeeper. All right. <laughs> right. I got to ask you this question, Pat. Right. So, and, and be honest with me. I mean, was it a nude beach where you were at? <laughs> no, it was not a nude beach. It wasn't? No, it was a family. Where was You'd be surprised how many families were there now most of the people on our side of the coast were were west coast people i don't know how cancun is if you were thinking about where everybody was from but uh most we had a lot of uh british columbia people uh went not winnipeg but uh, vancouver people uh seattle san francisco uh that that part of the country compared to talking to people from new york or boston or you know, Detroit, yeah. like that. We had all the East Coast people, and we did have some Canadians, uh, but a lot of people from like Jersey were down there. And actually, we ran into people that we had mutual connections with from Michigan because we amazing. lived. It, yeah, so Niles is the state line between South Bend and in uh, Indiana and in Michigan. And we, it was crazy. Like we're having, we were doing karaoke one night, right. and we meet these people that knew us. And I was like, oh no, I don't, oh dear, nobody's supposed to know me. That's right. <laughs> And I only ask you that question about the beach because years ago when I was coaching at Ball State, oh, no. and, and we and we took our team over to Europe for for you know a couple of tournaments for like a two week stay, and the last couple of days our head coach Dick Hunsaker said, "Let's take the guys to a beach in a resort town in oh, in, in Sweden," and we were saying in okay, <laughs> and, and we said okay, and so we get there, we walk down to the beach. And, you know, here we are. We got a seven footer. We got two six nine guys. We got a six eight guy. And we look, and it's a nude beach. And our players got their arms around. I bet they do. And so, if you know Dick Hunsaker, and yeah, he's Mormon. Well, yeah. And, <laughs> and you're very, very, very naive. Yes, and socially. He, and he looks at me and he goes, Hack, hack, hack. I said, What, Dick? I said, I said, it is what it is, man. Let's go down and just have a good time with the players, man. And so I always got to ask that question, okay? No, it was – no, I don't – Heck, heck. 
there, there part were all, of the overall cultural experience. Yeah, right? yeah, that no, was yeah. all of part of the no. learning process. No, and we had a seven foot center and and he had his arms around two ladies and <laughs> and he had Heineken's in both hands. And oh, Dick goes, Hack, what's he holding? What's he holding? I said, Dick, that's lemonade, Dick. Come sure. on, man. Well, here, let me ask Allison. <laughs> Come on. Because Allison back. You sound like the coolest coach ever, by the way. <laughs> no, we were just, you know, we were just trying to have a little fun. And he was Dick a was college just... assistant, and he was like 35, 40 years yeah. old at the most. So you can kind of figure he had, <laughs> yeah. to, he had to pacify the kids and keep them out of jail. Let me ask you this. When you went to Ireland for the football game back in what, late August, yes. uh, how'd you like warm beer? Now in Ireland, they were not warm in okay. London and like in England, I've been there and they are warm and they're terrible, <laughs> absolute garbage. I don't know how anyone can drink that but <laughs> in Ireland. Oh no, that was icy cold and okay. delicious. And the Guinness there is not like the Guinness that we get in America. It's the real it's, stuff. Huh? So the real, it's so good. I, I would never really order a Guinness here necessarily, unless it's like just for the novelty of it. But over there, I mean, they are fabulous. We went to the storehouse there and, and got to do a, a private tour where they like taught us the perfect pour. And it was a really great overall experience. And say, we haven't had a chance to have her on really since last last fall. So we've got all football season to listen to your little travel experiences and, yeah. Yeah, and everything yeah. else. Um, well, listen, we, I know you're on a limited time frame. Um, we, I mean, Notre Dame quarterbacks. I mean, tell yeah, us about the Notre yeah, Dame quarterbacks. Tell, tell us about Notre Dame football right off the bat, and then we'll get to basketball. Tell us, okay. what, tell us yeah, what you sure. about the quarterbacks. Well, I, I've had the opportunity to go. And, of course, you know, everything is uh, opinion-based. But to, to be able to be there and, and see the guys in person is – it was – it's it's exciting. But then to have Riley Leonard, of course, who is the transfer coming in from Duke, and he had that injury in the Notre Dame game last season – and then they tried to bring him back early, and then he re-injured it, and then he was out all of November, hasn't played a game since. They bring him into Notre Dame, and everyone says, oh, he's fine. We brought him in. He's got had surgery, but he's good to go. He's going to practice, and we got to see him. Now, when I saw him practice, you know, you wouldn't have thought he was injured or anything like that, but um, there was just a difference in, in sort of like that swagger, and that a, a big eyeball test for me is – you know, like personality wise, when I heard that Leonard was coming to Notre Dame, I was like, that feels like a good fit to me. He's he's a Notre Dame type of guy. He's coming from Duke. He's an academia. And, you know, he has that experience. He's uh, I thought that was a good fit in that sense. I like that he's mobile and that he's a running quarterback. But I think we've all or not. Maybe not. But a lot of us are a little gun shy now after the Sam Hartman experience. When he was coming over, it was like we looked at all his numbers and all his stats and it was like, Oh my, he's going to be awesome. He's going to be so great. And then as the season progressed, it didn't quite pan out the way we all had hoped. And it was like, you know, if you go back and look at his, at Sam Hartman stats, he had a ton of interceptions against some of these teams, but it was like, we, we didn't really pay attention to that because it was like, Oh, touch on touch on touch on. And I don't know if it was just the way Jared Parker was game calling and play calling. And it didn't work for him or just wasn't the right system or the right fit, but it just didn't quite pan out. So now I find myself much more reluctant to, to jump true. on board, you know, head first, all in. I'm this guy's going to be great. He's going to be awesome. So I, I'm cautiously optimistic, but with, with that eyeball test, regardless of just skill alone, like I like to see a guy who has that, something that it factor when it comes to quarterback i want to see and, them and hartman kind of had that you know, he did ha he, he had that in the huddle and it sounded like regardless of his numbers and his performance he had that swagger he had that walk of confidence where you know the buy-in for everybody i think yeah, let me no doubt this, about it let me ask you this question do you think that the uh the receiver depth is better this year uh, than it was last year because that will make a lot of difference to Riley Leonard or who el whomever uh, whoever else is you know slinging the football around. Well, absolutely, no doubt about it. They are loaded right now at receiver. That seems to be one of the most exciting positions on the field for the Irish. But uh, really quick, just to talk about what I was able to see, what surprised me out of the four quarterbacks that were out on the practice field, and that's Steve Angeli, Riley Leonard. Um, 
Kenny Minchie and then uh, the uh, <laughs> CJ Carr. Okay. So to see the four of them, of all four of those guys, the freshman CJ Carr is who had that it factor and had that swagger to him. And so that was interesting to me. And that made me really excited for the future. As far as like the mechanics and just the, the physical attributes, I really liked what Kenny Minchie has been doing so far this spring, but I feel like he's going to be kind of the guy who might get lost in the shuffle a little bit in all of this, because now with the injury, it, the updated thing has been that, you know, he now Leonard had to have that second surgery on the ankle on, on the plate in his ankle. So they are bringing him back in. He's out on the field, but springtime is so crucial for these quarterbacks especially a new guy who's learning the system but also you talked about the receivers that he, he's got to develop chemistry with those guys so he's missing out on a full spring whereas sam hartman had that full spring to learn the playbook to learn the guys to develop chemistry with them and so riley's taking a big step backwards without having that so that's a big concern to me it's not that i don't think steve angeli is a good serviceable quarterback, but he doesn't feel like the, you know, starting a one guy that is going to lead Notre Dame to the national championship. And so there's just some, some concern there of how this is going to all play out. I am glad to see that Riley is participating in practice. They have him out there doing light work. He's got a, a Taco brace on, which just on a side note, Taco is a brace that was developed actually by doctors at Notre Dame and by their medical staff and now they're being used all around the country all around the world they're in the nfl they're in like all of the major uh college football programs like alabama northwestern so it's pretty pretty amazing technology that they're able to be out there and play it does it's not that big cumbersome brace that you see guys wear in the past like they can literally wear it with their normal regular cleat that they would wear every day and they can get back on the field and play like that so that is good um, and to have him out there and, and he's learning the playbook, he's, you know, watching the film and all that stuff. But, it, you know, to not be able to have that full spring, I think, is a setback. Did it surprise you when Steve Angeli came back? Because he had a really nice bowl game for Notre yeah. Dame and, and threw the ball well, looked really good. And Pat and I talked about it, that that might be just an audition for him for the portal. And, 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 and I kind of thought that he probably wouldn't come back. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. I mean, that was a perfect audition for him. He was uh, he played great in that game, and he really showed when he actually got to be the starter, got to be the, the guy that the team, the opposing team was game planning for, and he went out and had a great game, a great showing. Um, that was probably his best, you know, stock option at that point, right, to, to show what he could do. And so I, I was confused by that, but, I mean, maybe – He's hearing otherwise, but you have to imagine if they're bringing Riley Leonard in, they plan on him being the starter. So I don't know if he, if they're going to try to do a one and two and they're going to both kind of play. But what I don't like about it is now it just drags this out longer. We aren't going to know who the starter is until right before probably the first game in, to start the season, as opposed to knowing who the guy was at the end of spring and being able to have that guy be your guy. And then Steve could have transferred or Kenny or who, whoever wanted to. And, and I think uh, the spring game will be a big deal for that too. Um, and here, here's the thing that's complicating it, as you mentioned, with uh, the injury, that's going to postpone him. And Jelly's thinking, okay, do I stay? Because how right. healthy is this guy? You know, I could be the starter by game two or game three and have the whole season. Or do I pull the plug and do I hit the transfer portal and, and let them have, you know, then you got Minshi and CJ Carr as the backups. Yeah. Well, and also, is it is he injury prone now? Is this going to be an ongoing thing that we think he's healthy? He gets in, he starts, and then boom, game one or game two, exactly. he injures it again and he's out. So, and maybe that is another reason that Angeli is sticking around. Yeah. And, and, and uh, maybe there, there was a certain bump in his NIL money too that said, hey, <laughs> we really like you. You love the grotto hang around here for another year and, 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 you know, give us a little insurance until CJ Carr is ready next year. Right. Right. Well, and that's where I feel like Kenny Minchie just kind of gets lost in that shuffle of all that. We talk about Steve Angeli because he is the backup 
technically you talk about Riley Leonard, they bring him in, in in theory to be the starter. And then you've got the future with CJ Carr. And then the other guy who's waiting in the wings is ready to come in next year as a freshman. So uh, Kenny Minchie, it's like, where does he go in all of this? And, and that dude is, in my opinion, he's got the body type. He's got the arm, he's got the strength. And, and so he really has a lot of potential there as well. And he's just kind of hanging out here, waiting in the wings. And I, I hate to see him kind of, you know, just float. And I think right there, you just gave him the sales pitch. He needs to go. Well, right. he he, he need, he's the one that needs to pack his bag well, and just, and just go mean, realizing that he's really going to be, when the season starts to me, he's going to be the number four. Because yeah, they're going to go to C.J. Carr as the three. Well, no, no. I mean, I think I mean, I mean, think they register C.J. Carr, to be honest with you. I, I, I think yeah, probably the I best agree. thing for him because he's so athletically talented and he's so good. And that brings up a, a tremendous moment, Pat, because – uh, Magic Mind is one of our sponsors. Okay, Magic Mind is a it's a it's a little bit of a drink that reduces your stress. It, it steadies. It gives you calm energy. It gives you focus and clarity, Pat. And it, it I mean, the benefits build daily. I'm, so I'm focused. So I need uh, some of that. <laughs> magic Mind. Uh, it's uh, Magic, uh, magic Mind. You, hey, you're up in Niles enough. You can go get these at the corner store. <laughs> magic Mind dot. Oh, there it is. There's the Look info. It up. Up, and if you if you punch in Coach's Corner, you get a twenty percent discount. Now here's the deal with it: I've been taking it for a little over two weeks, and my my mind, my stuff is rolling. Like I would never have said Kenny Minch, you got to go. I would have gave Kenny the benefit <laughs> of the doubt a little bit, but right now I think you need to down no, this right now, I, man. I thought I was right on target. He needs to go. I, I could I should be his agent. He, well, he needs he's, to go. He's got to have a place to go, and yeah, he'll, if he, you know, if he performs in, in the blue gray game, as, if he's as good as Allison. Good. Yeah, if he's as good as Allison says he is, somebody's waiting yeah, for him. Yeah, no, not his money too, man. There's, there's a phone call waiting there's, on there's, him. I can hear him right money now. money involved. Talk about the game tonight, Allison. What do you think about the Boilermakers and uh, the Yukon Huskies? Well, well, I would like to start off by saying I have covered Purdue over the years loosely when I worked for the Big Ten Network. And then, you know, now I'm with the ABC station in, in South Bend covering Notre Dame. But earlier this season, I traveled to West Lafayette and I did an interview with head coach Matt Painter for a story, a feature story I was doing on Notre Dame new head coach, Micah Shrewsbury, and their relationship and their the tutelage that he got from Matt Painter. When I was talking to Micah, I mean, he was going on and on about how much respect he had for Matt and how much he learned from him and how what a huge role Matt played in Micah becoming a head coach. And, you know, Micah did two stints at Purdue under Matt Painter. He worked with him as an assistant coach. And then he had left. He had gone to Boston Celtics with Brad Stevens, who he was an assistant coach with at Butler prior to Purdue. And then Painter talked to Micah and said, you know, if you really want to be a head coach in college basketball, come back to Purdue and I'll help put you in position. And so it's a, a really interesting story. And we can, if you go on my social medias, which is just Allie Hay Sports, um, and you see some pictures of, of me with Matt there. Yeah, there but, it is. Uh, yeah, talking to Matt, he could not have been more cool, more laid back. I, when I went there to talk to him, they were the number one ranked team in the nation at that point. And you, in, in the sense of like, he didn't have that entitled entitlement. He didn't have that like air about him. Like he was totally cool, totally open to whatever we want. I wanted to talk to him about. I finished up that interview about Micah and um, I was like, Hey, you know, we do this one segment called fast break and it's just kind of fun and, you know, kind of off the wall questions, but it's a get to know, know you piece. I was like, would you be cool with doing that? And he's like, Oh yeah, sure. No problem. Where do you want to do it? And he's like, Hey, come this way. Takes me and he's like, opens up the whole, court Mackey arena lights are on and we just walked up and down yeah. the court and i'm asking him random questions like you know what do you do in your free time and he's like what free time what does that mean i, I don't have any hobbies but you'd be surprised to know he's a huge chicago cubs fan his uh favorite chicago cub player of all time was dave kingman who was like six foot six home run hitter and he's like i love to watch him crush 
long balls out there when he was a kid. He'd come home from school and, and watch those during the day. He's thrown out the first pitch at Wrigley Field before. So it was just cool to get to know him like that. So I'm that story aired tonight on ABC 57. And you can find that on our social medias as well if you're interested. If you're, I mean, even if you're not a Matt Painter or a Purdue fan, like those kind of stories will make you root for him. You know, like just when you get to know them besides what, what you see on TV on the field or on the court and getting to just kind of know them as people, like that's the kind of stuff that I really like to do. And I think if you watch that, you might be rooting for the Boilermakers. Even if you don't like them, you might be rooting for them a little bit more tonight. My first head coaching job. There you go. My first head coaching job, uh, I was a little high school on the east side of Muncie uh, called Wapahani High School. And and Matt Painter played at Delta High School during yeah. that same time. And, 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 and so I played against Matt Painter. I, wow. I, I, got to, I got to watch him grow up. I got to watch him grow up in the coaching profession. He's a, he's, he's a really good friend of mine. Oh, and, that's and awesome. You're, and you're right on when you use the word cool to describe him because – I mean, he really is. That's yeah. what he is on. All, I mean, on the court, I mean, he's like all of us, right, Pat? Sure. I mean, just really intense. Just, I mean, just gets into him really hard. But off the court, he has a great sense about him, and, and he has this understanding that that he that, that he's not all this in a bag of chips. He's just a normal guy, man. Absolutely, and I think you kind of see some of that reflected in his players as well. Like watching Purdue through the tournament this year, and I mean, they just have kind of kept their cool and battled through things. And I think a lot of that, you know, you get some of, you take on the personality of your coach a little bit. Another thing that Micah Shrewsbury said that he loved about, you see him there throwing out the first pitch, but that he really appreciated and is taking, like is learning from him is the way that Matt Painter recruits. He doesn't care what your star is. He doesn't care if you're a four star, five star, three star, whatever. If you're a guy that fits into his system, that fits into his, team his chemistry that he's got he's going for you and i like that about him too and you see a lot of indiana guys in that starting lineup well that's for sure i mean what they said tw there's 12 players from uh, indiana that are in the final four and i think 10 of them are Purdue yeah players. no 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 exactly and, and, and they're guys and they're guys that are good players and uh, i mean matt takes them and and he makes them what he wants them to be with his team and, yes. and how they need to fit in. Last year was tough for him because those two guards were freshmen. And, yeah. and, those, and those two guards never played that many games. And at the end, they hit the wall. And, and it was very noticeable to see that. This year, those I mean, those two guards are a year older, mm -hmm. and uh, they ain't hitting any wall, man. I mean, all they're doing now is hitting shots. So, so who do you got tonight? What's, what's your take on the game tonight? Well, when I filled my bracket out, I, I did have Purdue going to the final four, but I had them losing to Houston and uh, which I obviously was wrong on that. And then, but I, I did have UConn did, going all the way. I had Houston. So did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm in last, had, I'm in last place, by the way, in our bracket. <laughs> right. Nobody cares about our brackets at all, by the way, but um, I do. I, and I think UConn has shown and to watch the way that both of those teams played in their final four matchups. If Purdue plays that way and UConn plays the way they did in the final, you know, stretches down the end, I, I do think that UConn has that advantage. I love Zach Eady, but man, that 7 2 center they've got at UConn, I mean, his speed and quickness, he doesn't have that thick, like heavy, strong strength presence, I think, that you see in Zach Eady, but he's got that speed. Watching him get a dunk. And then go down on the other end and get a black shot and then come immediately back down and get another dunk that that sold me on them. So I, I I'm a little worried for the Boilermakers tonight and I've never been a Purdue fan, but they've been my team. I jumped on with when, when Notre <laughs> Dame had no chance. I was like, I, and, and after talking with Matt Painter, this seems I'm like, I'm loving the Boilermakers. I'm rooting for them. But I think my head tells me that UConn definitely has got the advantage. I'm thinking uh, the coach Shrewsbury is going to get out there and, and hit the pavement. I mean, I know he signed three kids uh, 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 early, and, and I know he's looking at some other kids. I mean, I really like the way uh, the men's team played at Notre Dame from a toughness and, and a physicality standpoint. Now they just need to get some more players. And you look at the way they – I mean, his number one goal, he said, right from the start was defense. He was, They were going to be a defensive-minded team, and they bought into that. And, you know, he took a lot of criticism. Well, I won't say that. I don't actually think he did take any criticism. But when they got beat by that team 
Oh gosh, who was it? Uh, a team they had no business getting beat by, and they got blown out at home. Notre like Dame Georgia, did. Like a Georgia Tech. No, no. no. Early we, in the season, oh, back in Georgia December. Tech. Back in December. Yes, and he he lit them up in that press conference, right, and right. he said, yeah. "If you guys don't want to be here, I'll help you get into the transfer portal." And you know, they could have crumpled after that. They could have been like, "I I don't want to be coached that way." They don't, they're sensitive, you know, players nowadays, they don't want to talk, be talked to that way, but those guys responded. They came out and they won and it was at Virginia. And I mean, and they put it on them and it, we saw them then, you know, take step backwards and then take step forward. But the way they finished out their season was strong. You saw a lot of promise and Marcus Burton, God love him. If you can keep him in South Bend, and he doesn't try to leave early. He doesn't have that size, I don't think, yet for, for NBA. But, man, he is a really great young player, and he's got all the tools that you need. And he had to carry the load as a true freshman. And to have that experience that he got this year and then to have more pieces filling in, not having to play walk-ons, they really – the future is bright. I love what Micah Shrewsbury has done so far, and I think – the future is really looking positive for the Irish moving forward. They just need to find some big men. Yeah, no, they got yes. some bigs. I mean, athletic bigs. And and the thing I like about Marcus Burden is is he can. I mean, he doesn't know he's only five ten or whatever he is. He thinks right. he's only six four. And 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 the one thing that he does so well, and, and I say this all the time about great guards, he can stop on a dime and leave change. And he's got the, <laughs> and he's got that little pull up game that, mm -hmm. that he and. And he doesn't have to get to the rim. I mean, at 15 feet, he can make that all day long, and, and, and they can't get to that shot. So, so I think he is a great player. And, I mean, if he stays at Notre Dame for three years, I, I say look out for Notre Dame. 100% agree with you. Yeah, I mean, when they're playing a guy like – and no disrespect to Matt Zona, but when, you're, when Matt Zona is a guy that is now heavily in the rotation out of just pure desperation and you're playing – two at sometimes walk-ons in the game. I mean, he just had to fill the, the roster with spots. You know, Matt Zona was a guy who wasn't playing before, and he really shouldn't be playing probably right now, you know. So he's any, he's any, he's any. Let's just, those minutes need to be done. See him, Matt, have a nice career. Right, exactly. Well, I will say whatever you want me to say. It's your next school, man. <laughs> hey, talk about Hannah Hidalgo for a minute. Oh, I, my God. I mean, the women's team, I mean, had a great year, right? Absolutely. She was unbelievable. So fast and just so, so able to do whatever she needed to do. Like she can, she can get you the ball. She can take that shot. She can be the one that, that you want the ball in her hands at the end of the game. And, and she was able to score and get it done. And then to have all the accolades and get to get the steals. And I, I just loved it. She was so exciting to watch. Uh, definitely the, the best, uh, Notre Dame player, in my opinion, since really since Skylar Diggins. And that's there have been some great players that have played for Notre Dame, Jackie Young, uh, uh, Arike, uh, Agumbawale. We've seen some really good players come through. But, man, sh she just kind of has that total package. And, and she's got – she but she's very humble. She's got a, a, a great personality, but she's not cocky at all. And she just goes out there and she does the work. And then next year, you're bringing Olivia Miles back in. That's going to probably change the offense and the dynamic a little bit because, um, you know, the way they both play their mm -hmm. position. Um, Olivia players. Right. And, and But Olivia is going to be able to get the ball to people more, whereas uh, Hannah is going to want to, you know, penetrate and score more. So I, it'll be interesting to ha see how they kind of work that dynamic and if you can get the two of them on the court at the same time. But I think, man, they, they're, they're looking really good. I've seen some early preseason uh, for them at, like, number three. So right. we'll and see. You, if you can keep them healthy. Uh, yes. Well, you got with, with West Belt. And, you know, I, th I really like Sonia Citron. I thought she had a great tournament. I hopefully, hopefully those girls will stay. Hopefully, I, don't, I don't see any reason why they would want to transfer. But, of course, it's hard oh, to no. It's hard to well, the only one who just head. did was uh, KK Bransford. I saw she did, yeah, I saw she just yep. left. And, she uh, left. And she was Miss Basketball in Ohio for two years, yes. uh, two years in a row out of Cincinnati, which I was, well, I was really happy to, you know, I didn't know that much about her. I and mean, she was what, first, first one off the bench, and they had ended up with what a six, a six man rotation, seven right. for most because they had so many people hurt for them to do as well as they did in the tournament. 
I thought that was just a great job by Neil Ivey and keeping those girls together and figuring things out and putting the pieces together to put a very good team on the floor come tourney time. Hey, Allison, we want to thank you very much for coming on and, and, and first of all, classing up our show. I mean, <laughs> we got a couple of slaps like me and Pat doing this, and your knowledge of, of, of sports, I mean, is impeccable. You're great with it, and, and, and thank you very, very much for coming on and, and, and uh, being a part of it tonight. Oh, I really appreciate it. And uh, I, I had to lock myself in the bedroom. I'm literally <laughs> in my bedroom right now, in my bed, hiding from my children. But we got her in here. We got it done. And I appreciate you guys having me on. I say, did you have, were they home today for the eclipse? Or did you have, or do you even know? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, you well you that was part home. of the problem. My babysitter, <laughs> they don't normally go to the littlest ones. They don't go to daycare on Mondays. My mother-in-law watches them. Well, she's still on spring break in Florida. Okay. So that put a real wrench into my, my uh -huh. day. And we had well, to figure all that, that out. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that because I, I know you're, you're missing out on dinner up here. So ah, oh, that was the killer. Uh, you so, know, I wanted to go to bar. I know. So <laughs> we, we got get we'll get a rain check on that one. What? We'll, I tell you what, maybe we'll get you back up here in late April, early May, and you can talk about the yeah. spring game again or something if you have a chance. That would be great. I would be more than happy to do that. I right. appreciate it, Allison. Thanks. Thanks, Allison. See ya. Thank you, guys. Okay. All, right. All right. Bye. So what a great interview with the great Allison Hayes, man. She is so she's knowledgeable. She is so cool. Well, and you know, and she she's she's a humble a humble lady too. Because think about it, she's on TV all the time, and she takes a time out to, to like you said, to talk to two of us, and. Uh, and she doesn't have to do that. No, she but, doesn't. But uh, we didn't ask. I was going to ask her about Brandywine, but we ran out of time, you know, because she went up to Lansing to cover both Brandywine teams to uh, to see how they were doing. So, Scott, you you said you have a video. He's go, coach is calling uh, Joey Loose right now. So you get what do you got for us? Did you just mute me? I don't think so. Did oh, I? Oh no. Okay. No, no, you're good. No, I, I'm I muted. Thought I, I thought I. Okay. Uh, yeah. So while uh, while Heck gets Joey Loose on the phone. I've got a uh, quick, or do you have him? Yeah, yeah no, I got, I, got I, got, I got the great Joey Luce okay. on the phone from Don't the arena. Don't have him get to play the video. From you the want, arena you in want to, you Arizona. You want to play the video before no. that? doesn't matter. No, okay. go ahead. All right. I'll play it hey, after. What's happening, man? You good? I'm good. I'm good. How about you? Uh, I'm good. I'm sitting here with Pat King. We, we, we just got off with the great Allison Hayes. Uh, she does... Uh, uh, ABC Sports up here, and she does a great job with Notre Dame, and uh, she, she was awesome. And I mean, you got some big shoes to fear, uh, uh, fill here, big boy. <laughs> your, hey, Coach, no, no offense to you, Coach King, but this is your this is your show, Coach Eklinski. I know, I know how it works. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a pawn. Hey, just a pawn here. Do whatever you need to do, brother. Joey, listen, hey, this is kind of like Peyton and Eli. I'm the Eli part of it. So oh, I get man. I get to talk sometimes. Oh, uh, hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey. So you're actually in the arena, right? No, I'm looking at the arena. Oh, I'm really? Standing at, I'm standing at college game day. I'm, oh. at the, I'm at the college game day looking at the arena to walk in when I got down with you. That is, I mean, that That's is so exciting. cool. You got in on, on, on Friday night or Saturday? Wednesday. Jeez, oh, that's a that is a great little break, man. Yeah, I heard yeah. the fan. We, I heard the fan we, fest out there is fun. Yeah, are we on? Are we on yet? Yo, you're come on, man. You're live. We you're are cooking. live right now. Believe it or not, you're cooking you know, with I've gas. Been I've been waiting for you to give me the the, the go sign. There ain't no signal, man. Three, this is go. Three, two, one, boom, go. The great <laughs> Joey Loose. So a little bit about your career, man. Uh, a Wapahani kid. Uh, and was, was, was what, maybe in the seventh grade or eighth grade when I was coaching there. And, and then when I left you, you actually played for, for maybe, uh, Paul Keller a little bit, right? Yeah. I played for coach Keller. Uh, and then, and had a great, great career, uh, and, and played baseball at Purdue. We'll talk about your Purdue stuff in a minute here. I, I mean, I kind of want to chronicle your career a little bit. I, I think, I think your first head coaching job might've been at Benton Central. Is, am I right on that? Fountain Central High School. Oh, no, no, no. You stayed with the Centrals though, because from Fountain Central, you went to Benton Central. Yep. From yeah. Benton Central, somehow. Uh, miraculously, you got the best, well, the second best job in the state. Anderson was the best. You got the second best job in the state at Marion. 
And uh, I mean, I mean, had great years there. Went to Richmond from Marion. Went to Jeffersonville from Richmond. Just, I mean, I mean, you're talking about blue blood basketball jobs in the state of Indiana, and then and then took a little hiatus. Got into the administrative part of it. Uh, missed hoops, and now you're at Tippy Valley, just making that program one of the top programs in the state. Talk about your career a little bit and, and, and what you enjoyed most about it and, and all that. Coach, thanks. That's a lot of nice stuff that you said. Uh, you know, the, uh, the deal with basketball is at a young age, I got the chance to know you and, and uh, Rob New, and Joe Bradburn, Chris Brenedick, and Wayne Barker, and I can go through, you know, Duffy Burns, all those names, and uh, got to uh, be very excited about the game of basketball. And then, you know, to, to quickly move forward, I think a lot of what we're talking tonight is I, I have had a chance to have a lot of really good basketball jobs uh, in the state of Indiana. Matt Painter is a big reason, and Ron Heklinski is a big reason. <laughs> because any time I was up for an opportunity to – move into a better situation uh the two of you both were on the phone making sure that happened so yeah tippy canoe valley's been great I'm having a good time but uh a lot of those uh, experiences i got a chance to to have in the mcc and it, jeffersonville had a lot to do with your paint yeah so so growing up and you and matt painter were, were i mean you played against each other you were friends uh talk about that relationship uh, uh in high school and and playing against each other Second grade uh, YMCA basketball. It was Matt Painter's dad and uh, Joe Luce's dad coaching against each other. And <laughs> I'd love, we, I, uh, I would have loved to see Matt. We, we, we tipped it off. We tipped it off in second grade. <laughs> and the Y was the Y was a great program, but uh, they both had the same vision, and they took our Wapani team and the Della team, and they went to the boys' club. So from the third grade on, we competed at the boys' club, and and. Uh, I had a chance to play you know, a lot of basketball against Matt and with Matt, with Little, Little League Baseball. We got to be best friends when we were 10, 12 years old. And, and uh, you know, five years old, I've known him six. 10 or 12, we started staying on each other's house every other weekend. And here we are. I got a chance to come down here and watch him coach uh, the national championship game. Uh, my son, you know, be a uh, part of the uh, coaching staff and the bench tonight. Tommy's living a dream, and I couldn't be more excited about uh, just all those memories that have really come to fruition, getting a chance to experience it with uh, Matt, the team, and Tommy. Yeah, and you both go to Purdue University then. Matt goes to play basketball for the great Gene Cady, and, and you go and play baseball, right? I love my baseball coach. I, I played at Valparaiso University. Both Matt, Matt and Chris played at Purdue. Uh -huh. uh, my brother, and but Valpo was right there. So Coach uh, Paint would come down. He'd watch us play at Valpo, and then I would always get up to Purdue games. I got a chance to hang out with him a lot. Uh, you know, I got to know, you know, I got Conzo Martin, one of my you know, good friends. I got a chance to to know through Paint at a young age. I just saw Conzo uh, night before last. Him and uh, Brandon Brantley. We got a chance to sit and talk for a long time. Getting here early has been amazing, and. Uh, a lot of that goes back to the end of the days when Bank was at playing there. And I was coming to be a part of the Purdue stuff with him as a player. Transpired into this. Quanzo Martin just took the job at Missouri State, right? Yeah, he just got that job. Yeah, you know, he knows Zoe very well. Yeah, I uh, know uh, I do know. When I was coaching at Anderson, he would always come and watch, you know, watch some open gyms and and and, and take a look at some players. He looked at a kid named Antoine Boyd who I had at Anderson and and, and, and really liked him, but but at the end wasn't good enough. Antoine Boyd was really good friends with with Etwan Moore from uh, from the region, and uh, so so I had Antoine, a, Antoine Boyd is an unbelievably fantastic high school basketball player. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he really he, was. He's two inches taller. Yeah, no, exactly. That's that's exactly what I thought. He was six three. If Antoine would have checked in at, at, at six five, maybe six five and a half, I mean Antoine Boyd could have had a career. As it was, he played at Middle Tennessee State, and and then he transferred to to IUPFW and and had a great and had a great career there. I've watched him score a lot of points while I was standing over there on the sideline. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a good player. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so what's your take on, on, on this game tonight? Now, what do you think? I mean, one of the things that, that I'm kind of concerned about is, is, is the perimeter play 
uh, of UConn versus the perimeter player Purdue. Uh, talk about that a little bit. I mean, it's uh, it's really simple. You know, I think if you listen to you know what even you know the coaching staff what Matt says when he's interviewed. I mean, you know our our guards if they show up we're good and uh, back he's going to take care of. I'm sure his uh, double double and uh, if those guards can match up. And uh, it's, it's about making shots, you know, that, um, on paper, on paper, as far as maybe eye test, let's say, I don't know, you know, they, you might give you kind of nod with some, with some height and some the length, but uh, I think when it comes down in stat sheet, we make shots, we're going to win. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's, I don't think there's any question about that. Now, now I know you and Painter hooked up. Uh, on, on one of the evenings and, and, and you guys kind of hung out a little bit and, and had a good time. And, and I heard from a little, from a little bird that my name came up in the conversation on, on <laughs> one of those, on one of those meetings uh, that you guys had. Uh, well, well, I mean, how did, how did my name come up, man? <laughs> Coach, hey, I, uh, I, I, there isn't anywhere, anywhere I don't go that, that your name doesn't come up and, I, and believe me, I've been smart enough to ride that as long as I could too. <laughs> so, anytime, you know, I always preface it with, you know, I love Ron Hecklin. Then I let you, then I let them tell me. But on this, on this occasion, you're talking about is I'm, I'm sitting there with Shane, and we're uh, Westfield, Westfield basketball coach, coach, uh, coach Smith, and uh, we're sitting there talking, and and Paint comes up, and and Paint's sitting there, and the three of us are having a a good conversation. Paul Lust was there. It was, it was a lot of fun. And I'm, I'm listening. And uh, anyhow, your name came comes up. And, of course, Pink says something to the extent of LeBron James. LeBron James. And, uh, and then Shane gets in telling a story about how he gets to coach the All-Star. And I didn't know took him with you. Like, he got a coach. He said he was a part of the McDonald's All-American game with you. Yeah, well, the story that I got also was when you were the head coach at Richmond High School. Oh, and, no, I, I just wasn't going to tell that. And you brought the Red Devils into the wigwam. And, of course, I was doing my my same stupid thing that I, I, I do all the time. I mean, there was no coaching box for me at the wigwam. And, and, the, uh, and, and, and <laughs> the scorer's table obviously went a little farther in my direction. Um, and you, you told the official, get him back in his coaching box, which you yeah, probably I, should have, which you probably should have, because I'm in front of you trying to get my players to do stuff. Yeah. yeah he crossed half court on me one time, Joe. So when I was down there playing, yeah, yeah the, the, the court, it, it was, it was the box literally went across the, the half court. I mean, it was, it was right there and yeah, you're supposed to be apologetic. You're yeah. supposed to be apologetic because you got in the way of Ron Hecklinski. I, I blocked him out one was, time. Who was coaching? He, the school, <laughs> hey, the, the clock keeper told us to move one time when we were when I was coaching down there when I was at my South Bend Adams team. So he I, didn't finish his story. Pat. Yeah, you ought to hear the end of this one. Well, no, well, he, no. So, yeah, go ahead, finish it. You can tell it, man. I said, Coach, sit down. You know what? What are you doing? Get out of front of me. Sit down. And he turns around right there in front of me and all those fans, the whole bit. He said, Joey Luce, I'll whip your ass right here in front of everybody, everybody in this gym. He said, you sit down. I said, Coach, you can't do that. And you remember you remember who uh, comes running over there and stops the game and tells us that we better stop it because you called me out in front of everybody? No, no. who was it? It was Shane. Uh, Twin Lakes. uh Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The official, yes, he yeah. did. He did my game too when I was there. Yeah, he did a lot of our game. Yeah, he said. He said he does all coaches. Shane, games. Shane Frank, Shane Frank. I think. Shane I think. Frank. Yeah, yeah. I think he he needs. He should have had an Anderson varsity letter jacket. No, no, but well, but no. They ran out of. They ran out of the ability to print those jackets up for the officials that ran through there on his tail. <laughs> no, but then he says, grow the hell up, you two guys. Get to your yeah, sides. He did. Grow and the then, hell up. So then it quit. Then to finish the story, it stopped. So <laughs> Pat, so it was done. We coach our game. I don't I think I think they won. And and so in the handshake line, he gives me the handshake and hold holds me up. And Joey, don't ever do that to me again. I said, "All right." That's, that's exactly what he said. That's funny. <laughs> well, so so I think I think one of the great things, um, uh, you know, in the game or 
I mean, in sport, in any sport is, I mean, it is an entertainment business. And, and when you're, and when you're going against, you know, a friend of yours, like you and me were going at each other and, and we could play that and we could play that up a little bit. I, I thought, oh, yeah. I thought, I thought that was really cool because, because the look on the people at the scorers bench, a guy named Jack Graham, a guy named Doug Vermillion who, who did the PA and, and the five rows of people behind the scorers bench. Well, I said, Joey, I'm beating your ass. The, the, the look on their face, the look on their face was, I mean, I still see that today, man. But that's and, why those people have season tickets for 45, 50 years there, because they yeah. they come to expect that. No, they, they've they seen that stuff with Bill Green and, and, and Norm Held and all, and, all, and all those great coaches that came through the North Central Conference. That had to be a special time for you to be in the North Central Conference. I mean, those years at Marion were phenomenal. You go to the state championship game, and and then and then the years at Richmond. I mean, I spent I spent two years of my early career as an assistant coach at Richmond, so I, I know that Richmond community. That had to be really cool for you to be in the North Central Conference at, at that time in your life. Oh, I wouldn't change uh, uh, any of that stuff. I, you know, you told me, and I'm and I'm not just co-signing on you on all this show it's truth all this stuff like I, you've done so much for me professionally personally but professionally and i i remember you calling me and saying hey you got a chance to get this marion job and i said you know like i didn't i didn't realize i had no idea what i was getting into i was young uh rocky kent was the athletic director and you know jim brunner had a big deal to do with it you talked to brunner for me thank talked to rocky i ended up getting hired but the north central conference is old school throwback stories. I should I, I could write a book about my 11 years in the North Central Conference, and uh, it was is quite a time. But no, it's uh, it's different. Uh, sold out gyms, you know, people people coming, you know, when it mattered at the end of the year, it was big time basketball. Yeah. And, I th- and I think that's where we are right now tonight with Purdue because Purdue yeah. would paint. I mean, it's it's old school stuff. It's I mean, all, all everybody thinks is it's, it's Gene Cady you know, stuff back from the old days. And that's what people see. You've got Indiana bred kids playing in the final game of the national tournament. And everybody's a Purdue fan right now in Indiana. Right. That, that are here for, you know, that are here under the, uh, you know, recruiting assumptions that they came to make the whole better than, the, you know, than the individual. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing with NIL. It separates so many, you know, could be great teams uh, because it individualizes guys uh, that's not done right here all those distractions when you look at the nil you look at all that stuff all those distractions matt keeps you know in his coaching staff and the leadership you know their players keeps it out of their out of their program that's a that's a big deal it's why they're successful the, the one thing i always say is, is that when you put the biggest guy on the floor and, and he's on your team and he's skilled and i mean double doubles are his middle name. I mean, I, I think you have a really, really great chance, I mean, to win any game because uh, defensively the other team has to make a decision how they're going to do that. Are, 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 are they going to play one-on-one? Are they going to come from the weak side, the double? Are they going to come from the ball side? And, and then kick it, you know, kick it around twice. Now someone's got to make a J. And, and like you said when you first came on, if you're making J's and you're making shots and you're making them pay for how they're going to guard Zach Eady, then I, I think I think Purdue has a great chance in this game tonight. Uh, I totally agree, and uh, it'll be interesting if they go the other way, and uh, just to see you know which one of those bigs outplays each other. I mean, Zach's Player of the Year the last two years in the country. I'd, I'd like to think that uh, that goes our way, but. Depending on how they decide to guard Eden, which is every game Purdue's played for the last, you know, what, two and a half years, uh, will really have a lot to do with how the outcome, you know, turns out. Your brother's team at Wapahani had a hell of a run this year, didn't they? Oh, man, they weren't bad. They were good. They, <laughs> they were fun to watch. Uh, Isaac Andrews, the Indiana All-Star, you know, he's got to be an Indiana All-Star. And, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you, man, it was a fun team. But uh, Benner's, <laughs> Dave Benner's a heck of a coach, man. Jack Benner's a great player. That was a tough combo for him to beat. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to get a chance to watch him the next few years, too. He's, I mean, he's a Matt Painter guy, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I love that. Yeah. yeah, I love that. How's your mom and dad doing? They're good. They're good. They are uh, home. They'd probably try to come. They weren't, uh, you know, getting a little experience. They're putting on some age, so they wanted to watch it from home. 
Yeah, no, I, I, please give them my best, man. Your mom and dad are great. And, and, and your dad was, you know, was on the school board of Wapahani. Your mom and dad are great. I mean, your whole family's really cool. And, and you're hanging out in Phoenix with your lovely wife, man. And, uh, you know, enjoy the night, man. And uh, uh, when are you coming back? Coming back on Wednesday morning. Uh, good for you, man. And enjoy the break. Get back at it at the Valley, man. Get your spring workouts going. You're going to have a good team next year again, aren't you? Yeah, we should. Yep. Yep. Disappointed how this ended, but we'll be all right. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, 17, 18 wins is, I mean, that's the norm for you now. Now you just got to get some tournament success there like you've had everywhere else, man. Hey, you're the best, Joe. Thanks for taking a minute and, and enjoy yourself tonight. All right. I yeah. enjoy listening to you guys. Thanks hey, a lot. Take care, Joe. See you. All right. Yeah. See you, buddy. All Love right, you, bye -bye. Joe. Yeah. Bye. All right. Thanks to you, Coach. Bye. bye. Uh, he's, he's, he, I mean, so Indiana basketball is full of characters, right? Yep. And, and, uh, and, and you playing at Anderson, I mean, you saw those characters straight up, oh, Sam sure. Alford, uh, Bill Harrell, Muncie Central, uh, all those, I mean, lots of them. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, Joe, I mean, Joe Luce fits right in there. He's, I mean, first of all, he's a great coach. His, his team is going to win a lot of games. He's animated. And, uh, you know, I mean, that, I mean, I mean, what we said was a true story. He says, he says, heck, sit down. <laughs> and then he tells the ref, hey, sit him down. And I, I, I walk over there in front of his bench because I'm real close anyway. Oh, yeah, I, you're real close. I, walk, I said, Joe, I will beat your ass if you ever tell the ref to tell yeah, me to sit people down. People don't understand how the scores table at Anderson at the old <laughs> wigwam, at the, I'm going to say the old wigwam was off, offset. Set. Toward me, yes. Toward the visitors, so it, the entire scores table was on my side of half court. Yeah. So because of that, my coach's box went from like the maybe the three point line down to out of bounds. Uh, and my coach's, and your coach's, went to coach's half box court. went from half court to out of bounds, <laughs> or, 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 or <laughs> down mean, to or the stage, down to the stage, on that, and around the corner, on that given game, wherever I wanted it to go. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you were, and what official would say, "Hey, heck." I say, stop, man. Well, it's all, the wigwam. All I remember was one time you were at my bench getting it. You were drinking out of my water bottle at the scores table. So I went down to the other end and got a water bottle from Kim Wood. And Kim, Kim was looking at me like, going, what are you doing down here? And I go, well, heck's down there. I figured I'd come down here for a little bit. So no. I was down at your bench getting water bottle. I was getting a water yeah, bottle no. talking to Kim Wood, who was your stat man. And today, and today people get so uptight sometimes. They don't understand. Man. Uh, and, and no, I remember that. Well, I, we, you go to Chris, my side, yeah. and I go to your side. And, we, and, and then we walked back from there. Yeah. Hey, and we what's just up, kinda, Pat? How you doing, man? We just walked back, and we were kind of following the game. Oh, I know, man. Those those were the good old days. Hey, I'm going to take a minute here. Han Funeral Homes, they're the absolute best. <laughs> Pat Han uh, owns Han Funeral Home, located at 505 West A Street, downtown Mish. You can call them anytime at 574 255 1474. Stop in to get answers from the local funeral professionals about your funeral needs. Han, Han Funeral Homes, a family serving families. Well, we all know how good Tony Letcher is and uh, health markets insurance, whether you need help with your health insurance or Medicare. Now, now I know you're on Medicare, I'm right? On Medicare, yes. I, I'm fixing maybe to look into that a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to go meet with, with Tony. And uh, I mean, it's time to get the right coverage for the right price. Call Tony at 574-307-882 or visit T. Letcher at tletcher.com magic mind man are you kidding me i've been taking it i don't know two and a half weeks maybe and i can just really really tell a difference on how much more clarity i have how much more focus i have how, I, I mean my ability to, to remember things uh is just a, is it's amazing to me actually uh, i mean my, uh, my reduced stress level uh my steady my calm energy uh, my focus and clarity, it's great stuff. So, uh, I mean, pull up uh, magicmind.com. If you want to order it, Coach's Corner, uh, 20 for a 20% discount. And I'm going to – so I, I'm going to – I mean, I'm going to uh, – You're going to give me some of that. Well, well, uh, I mean, this right here. And I may say, Pat, I want you to drink this drink on the air. This right now. I mean, drink okay. it on the air. And you're going to drink it and you're going to say, yeah, man. 1972, I had 18 against Logansport. I mean, I had 18 and 12 against Logansport. I can tell you right now, 1977 
at IUP or, or, or at IUPFW, whatever that is whatever in Fort Wayne. Called. Yeah. I went for 27 I, and 22. IPFW. IPFW. I went for 27 and now 22. It's just, now it's just pretty Fort Wayne. I, yeah, I can't even tell you what I had for breakfast. I mean, I mean, I used to not be able to tell you what I had for breakfast. I went for 27 and 22 in 1977. Let me ask you a question. Do you remember Actually, where you were in 1979, the last time we had an eclipse? In 1979, the last time we had an eclipse, I was the freshman basketball coach at Knox High School in Knox, Indiana. I taught health at Knox Middle School, and I had an absolute blast. I live, I, I lived on Bass Lake. I had a cottage on Bass Lake. I was 22 years old, had a cottage on the lake. And you know what I thought? Life doesn't get good. And even, I went to college and I got a degree. Now I'm, I'm living on a lake. That's funny. So, yeah. That's funny. So if you would have asked me that a month ago, I would have fumbled around and said, well, let me see where I was. Let me see. And I, and, and I might have figured it out, but That's funny. I just jumped at this. Right, I mean, right off the table. Well, here. I know. I was can say, I, we can I play the video go. now? That, uh, yeah, play the video. Play I, the video. I, think you'll get, I think you'll get a kick out of it because it, right, it, it's, it's, it's Tommy Loose. So I thought... Uh, oh, having, yes. having, having Joe on would, would be a good time to. That, you? Yeah, go yeah for but it. I can play it now. Here we go. Welcome to another episode of Getting Loose with me, Tommy Loose. Today's guest is Boilermaker great and NBA champ, Brian Cardinal. You ready to go, Brian? Great. Let's begin. Pull those knee pads up and let's get the blood pumping with some running in place. Bend your knees slightly. Hands up. Now run. All right, everybody right. Come on, let's see that hustle. Left. Good. Look at Brian. He's got it. All right, bring it back middle. All right, everyone stop. Now shake it out. Now it's time to clean the glass with some rebounding stretches. All right, for this one, we need to have our feet shoulder width apart. We're going to stand straight up, put our arms up to the sky, grab that rebound, bring it down, and clear it out. All right, everybody up. Get that rebound. Bring it down. Get that rebound, right, Brian? All right, up. Grab it. Bring it down, twist right, twist left. All right, everybody relax and let's shake it out. When your nickname's a custodian, you can't be afraid to clean the floors, die for loose balls, and do the dirty work. But first, you gotta get loose. So let's do some hip circles. Everybody needs to widen their stance, hands on your hips, and we're gonna make a circle. Yep, bring it all the way around. Feel it. Oh, hey, look, there's Coach Katie. Come join us. I'm not doing that stupid shit. Well, I guess it does it for this episode. I hope to see you guys again soon. And remember, keep it loose. That is so cool, I think man. That sense of humor is inherited. No, that is, I mean, the marketing with that from, from the Purdue staff is amazing. And, and then to have Coach K walk across with a little headband action on, man. It's a whole series of videos. If you, if you go, on, go on YouTube and just search for getting loose with Tommy Loose. There's more than one. There's, yeah, awesome. there's a bunch. He, he was and probably still is the king of Mackey. Oh, well, yeah, shoot. I mean, he was a walk-on oh, and, 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 and played. The fans loved him. And played at Richmond High School and, and, and was a really nice high school player. And obviously not good enough to play in the Big Ten. But because of Joe's and, and, Matt's, and, and, and Matt Painter's relationship, uh, um, uh, 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 Matt took Tommy sure. as a walk-on. And, and at the end of the time, Tommy just – I mean, just played so hard, helped the team in, in preparation. Scout, scout team stuff. No, and then and then and then became a legend at the end of the games when they're up twenty. Mm -hmm. We you know we want Tommy. Sure. And 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 Tommy would get in and and play and take a charge, dive on a loose ball, <laughs> or or do whatever he, he had to do, you know, because that's what he did six days a week in in, in, in practice. Exactly. And the thing exactly. I love about Matt too is he he really embraces the the family aspect of it because Carson Barrett's on this team and so is Brian Waddell and mm -hmm. I know Waddell played played with Matt you know, back in the 90s with Big Dog um, and Carson Barrett I think his dad's the coach at LCC no. yeah yeah he is the co or, or, or or, or I think he was the coach at LCC, and now his other son might have taken over for him. But 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 Dave Barrett was a good. I mean, was a good player at Purdue for a while. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. So there. I mean, there are a lot of a lot of family, a lot of legacies uh, in in the Purdue bloodlines. 
hey, 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 what's our brackets look like, man? I mean, do you uh, have them anywhere? Uh, I mean, I can I can look them up real quick. I know our our family brackets down to me and my cousin Kate, um, and I hope she wins because she picked Purdue. I picked UConn uh, before no, the you're, tournament you're started. You're Purdue guy. You yeah. pick UConn. Well, yeah, but I just said I hope she wins because okay. if she wins, then uh, I really win. I, I, I mean, yeah. all right. I mean, I, yeah. I I mean, I believe I picked Purdue. Well, we we have a family bracket that was very competitive. I think there's about 15 names in that. And uh, for, you know, with the five and five brothers and sisters and all the siblings. What and, place were you? I'm back in the pack. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's another reason for I magic have, mind, man. That's pack. another reason. Since I got past third or fourth and I quit looking. But, oh, I love and, that. And I, and I believe uh, my name's at the bottom of, of one of our brackets for Coach's Corner. And then we have that uh, the Sweet 16 bracket, actually, I think I have a, still have a chance. Yeah, you and uh, you and Jack are, are 11th and 12th. We're 11. Jack and I are. <laughs> well, and and because Jack and Jack had, Duke, and Jack had a little bit of a reason. He tore his his, his uh, Achilles tendon, and, and he's and he's laid up. He had surgery on Wednesday, so okay. so he's kind of laid up now, going through the pain. Okay. But he where am I? At, man? I mean, where am I at? Uh, you got, you got the ESPN one. That was oh, the I gotta team. yeah, I gotta look that one up. Chart. Hey, hey uh, what about Don Staley? Though? I, I mean, the head say, coach at South Carolina, man, winning the the, the national championship for for the Lady Gamecocks. Now, they, I mean, they are as good as UConn is, and if you think about it, they are a, a huge team. They they went nine deep against Iowa the other day. You know, and Iowa had a great first half yet on 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 Sunday afternoon. They were up like eleven to two to start the game. Yeah, to start off. I mean, you have I think. It was 22 all eventually, you know, very quickly. They, they caught up. And if you remember, I think uh, uh, Caitlin had 18 in the first quarter. Correct. And she had 25 at the end of three quarters. So she, wow. scored, she scored seven in the middle of two quarters. And that's when the game you know, obviously changed. Well, I mean, the last three seasons, Don Staley's record at South Carolina is 109 and three. Now, now yeah. let me say that one hundred and nine and three, and and to th- to think of it, they had six girls go in the draft last year. So she came in this year with an entirely brand new team, and some people argue it's even they're even better this year. They're you know they're a better team this year than they were last. So yeah. I think they said they so they've won what sixty some in a, they they won sixty some games in a row. I, when's the last, well they got beat last year in the final four, didn't they? Iowa, Iowa beat them in the. I think like, they lost. I think they lost in the title game, didn't they? Uh no, that was the LSU because it was LSU and Iowa. So Iowa beat them in the in the in the Friday night game, the final four game, and then okay. Iowa and LSU were in the finals last year. So they've been final four, I think, three straight years, and won won two of the two of those three. When you talk about Iowa, I mean, you certainly got to say that that uh, that fan base uh, has had a great, I mean, a great time watching Caitlin Clark play and, and cheering for her and watching the success that she has had with that program. And and now, obviously, she she will be the number one pick yeah. of the of the Indiana Fever. And the Indiana Fever's season tickets have skyrocketed. Oh, good. The, the, good. the, thing, the thing that I'm kind of disappointed in is how some of these pros have – React. Yeah. Did you did you see what Diana Tarazi and uh, Sue Bird were Sue Bird. saying about her on the yeah, on the really simulcast? Disappointed. Now they might be right, but to say what they did, I mean, here's the next generation of, of girls that are going to take their, her place. And, and don't you want to lift up the sport? They're giving her a hard time. I mean, that girl has done more to advance. I mean, a program that uh, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, uh, we watched the game maybe. And now it's it's been these last few weeks yeah. it's been must. I think see. they had like twenty million people, or maybe not twenty, maybe like thirteen million people watching yesterday. Exactly. And and, and and why are they watching? It's because of her. The the girls from Alice. Noah Cardoso is very good too from and, South yeah, Carolina. And, yeah. To have a six, yeah, and, a six seven center in girls basketball that can play. Wow. Um, why isn't she the number one draft pick? Well, and, and, and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's called progress. And uh, the old guard, Sue Bird and Tarasi, they got to say, hey, we, we didn't have this. Okay. Mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't have they it. They should be thrown but, to death. But I'm the jealous. sport. I think they're and, jealous. And, yeah, no, no. And, and I agree a little bit that 
you know, both from a financial standpoint, maybe both from an advertising standpoint of, of what these new players are going to get. But, uh, you know, a lot of players could say that, but it, uh, I, it didn't happen in, in their era. Right. And the players like Tarasi and Sue Bird, they were on the bottom floor, man. Mm-hmm. They were on the They're- bottom floor. They, and, they have a whole nother level of respectability because they are the ones that really established things. exactly exactly and now, and now this group has taken it to the next level yeah and 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 the money yeah I, I mean the money is there now I right. mean it wasn't there and even when 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 they first started in the in in the WNBA you couldn't make a living uh on that salary in 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 what the four month schedule the five month schedule so to make the living they had to go overseas. They go, they go to Europe and they're playing twelve months a year. Yeah, yeah. That's why Brittany Griner was in Russia getting yeah, no, exactly. Put into a gulag, trying trying to get back home. But now I don't. I mean, I don't believe that they need to do that now because of the well, NIL. Ice the Cube NIL. offered Caitlin Clark like sixty million to go play in the on three league. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I and 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 I don't know. That would be a sideshow. But if if yeah. if they're going to offer you that kind of money. Yeah. Yeah, the I mean, for ten players, games, for ten games, go. Right, I mean, go. Well, and, and uh, I guess we can do the argument: Is this money going to carry over to the pros in the WNBA, or is this a college thing right now? Because we, for the last six weeks, we've been telling you, a lot of these girls are making more money in college than they, because if it's money's coming from the college event, then they will in the WNBA. So that's why they've stayed. Well, yeah, and 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 plus, once they go to the WNBA. They're going to have money coming in. Right. I mean, before they were they were twenty two year old college seniors that, that really didn't have a dime to their name, mm-hmm. and and now they counted on on their money and their marketing that they were going to get in the WNBA. Now they're coming in as established, almost millionaires. Right. I mean, coming in to go play. And yeah. Clark's still going to be in those State Farm commercials. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there, well, I don't that, think there's any question. And that's what I was saying. Where is their money coming from? This someone NIL call money? for an old pacer. Yeah, and then you get Reggie Miller in the background. <laughs> no, I, I saw that. So, I, that's so a little I tell cool. you, girl. I think girls' basketball is just well, fine. Here, let me let me ask you this. Do you do you think it, it <laughs> yeah, matters at all? Man, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it matters at all that she didn't win a, a championship? D- does that affect her, her no, legacy at all? I, I, of, of I her? don't think so at all. I, I think. I mean, she's the she's the best women's basketball player I've ever seen. Yeah, and I, I don't think that that really matters because because what matters is the number of Caitlin Clark jerseys that everybody's buying, mm-hmm. and the little girls that are running around saying that I, I want to be. I want to. I want to play basketball, not volleyball. If <laughs> if, if, if Caitlin Clark. I mean, if her name would be associated with any summer camps, mm-hmm. those summer camps would be full. Oh, sure. well, you know, with, with the little girls, and 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 we all saw. It. I mean, in our in in our sport, when the Michael Jordans and the Larry Birds mm-hmm. and the Magic Johnsons went through, and I I think I mean the girls are catching up with that now. And and, and I've said this now the last couple of years. I mean, I, I've watched I, I've watched women's basketball. And they they play so much like the men's game now. It's not even funny. Those, I mean, those point guards, they pull up with Jays that look just like Jays that that Allen Iverson shot and some of those other great guards right. shot. They're not shooting it down here like they used to. They got the ball up, and their skill level now is is at a really really high level. And I mean, as with everything, it's going to continue. It's going to continue I, to go up. I think so. Their jump shots don't look like Rod Creech taught him how to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a name out of the past. Yes, it is. Jeez. Yes, it is. Hey, let's talk some baseball. Scott, do um, run my little Fricks car back. We need to do our Fricks commercial. So let me, let's me let see. What do you got? Car. I mean, and what I'm do you gonna, got? I've got my road team. We're gonna... Hi. Hi. And you can go to Fricks and at uh, down the street here. Call Fricks at 574-256-0650. You can see the number there across the bottom of the screen. I haven't driven for a little bit because of the surgery I had. I'm not allowed to be in a car that long, even though I sat in an airplane for three hours. So I'm going to try to get back. The doors didn't blow out either. No, no. I, I was I was on a 737. What was it called? A What's it? Jumbo, whatever it was you were telling me about. It was a new, the new planes. Yeah, the Max, 737 Max. That's what South Good Park for you, on. man. So it was good stuff. Well, hey, baseball is going to be my road team because everybody in basketball has been neutral. 
Uh, some of you watched last night's game, Scott. You're not going to like this, but the Astros beat the Rangers last night 3-1 to one in Arlington and had a nice ball game. It was 3-0 with going into the ninth, as I recall. And uh, Oh, you, you, uh, you mentioning the Astros, that reminds me. I need to put the trash can out. Oh, stop it. See, I- In Dusty We Trusty. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, that wasn't that- him. That was A.J. Hinge. They've got and they've got a new manager. Anyway, baseball is with us. And one of the things we were going to bring up real quick here to finish the end of the show, we've got pitchers already here after what 10, 15 games at the most. We've got pitchers getting hurt. Elbows, shoulders, what's going on? Yeah, I, I mean I mean my take and, and, and they want to say, you know, there's a lot of speculation that the pitch clock might have something to do with it. And and I mean I I don't I don't know if that's the case. I mean, I think the emphasis, uh, uh, number one, on spin rate, uh, I think I think that emphasis is is huge for pitchers nowadays. How you know how they can get the ball to move, and 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 I'm not sure that, that the pitchers today. Well, I mean, I I am sure. I I think they're I think they're babied. Uh, I mean, I mean, you get to the 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 uh, you know fifth inning, and you got 85 to 90 pitches. I mean, you're coming out of the game. And, and you look at some of the old pros, Fergie Jenkins used to throw 27, 28 complete games a year. Mm-hmm. And his arm and his arm was fine. Well, think about but, the White Sox uh, World Series in 2005. When they won that World Series, all their pitchers went complete games. I think, or m- not all of them in every game, but I think it was maybe game five, the clincher. No, it was, it was game four. They swept them. They swept the Astros, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 it wasn't and, until Game Four that Bobby Jenks got in for the last inning. Yeah, Bobby Jenks was great. I used to love Bobby Jenks. By the way, and, man, I think a lot. And we, Scott, we put, we need to get our our your in your your brother in laws on here with get Jordan and Eric and everybody on here because they're pitchers, and and talk about because Heck made a good point. The spin rate, everything's about velocity. If you talk to Jordan, he can tell you what every kid at his camps are throwing. He knows how fast they're throwing. Everything's velocity, velocity, velocity. Yeah, and, and, and the one thing matter to Mark they, Burley. And the yeah. one thing that they don't do is they don't is they don't know how to back off. It's all it's 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 max attempt. It's yeah. max velocity. And, and and sometimes and sometimes if you throw ninety eight and you want to strike somebody out, it's great for ninety eight uh, a mile an hour heater. But the first pitch at the bat can be ninety six. Right. Could be 95. Or 88 or 90. You know, yeah. I think that's why Justin Verlander has been able to keep his career relatively healthy is because he, he never really dialed it up until until he got later in the games when he got warmed up. Because as a, as a former White Sox fan, having to having to face the, the pitching rotation of Ma- Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, and then Rick Porcello, Verlander would throw maybe 92, 93 in the first inning, but by the seventh inning he was pumping in 99, 100. And then the the one time where Max or uh, where Justin started the All Star game, he tried to start throwing a hundred right off the bat, and they whacked him. And he said, "Yeah, that's why I don't come out throwing, trying to throw a hundred because I'm all over the place, and then I end up hurting myself." Well, I think I, I saw where Verlander pitched uh, yeah, over the weekend at rehab, who start at the AAA Sugar Land, and uh, and he. He pitched four innings, and uh, I think the, I can't remember what his pitch. He was on a pitch count, but uh, they he said he gave up six runs. But he had six strikeouts. I saw where uh, Strasburg retired. I saw where that that happened too. Yeah, no, no, he's had a great career, but he, did... he's 32, 34, something like that. I can't remember what the numbers. But uh, uh, Verlander's forty-one, and he's still going to try to pitch. So, so a little stuff like that. So, hey, let's did finish. I, the well, hey, hey. Hey, did I hear you talk about Sugarland? Sugarland, Texas. Did, did you mention the name Jennifer Nettles? No, stop it. On Sugarland. Sugarland. Are you Texas. kidding me? That's one of my. That's one of my favorite groups. I kind of want to end this um, a little say, we bit. We got co- we got basketball coaches. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ones. basketball Let's coaches all the move. The big news today. And here's what. Uh, I'm gonna, let, let me start <clears> this off. Isn't it interesting? Here's the night <throat> of the final game of the basketball season, and who are, who was everybody talking about today? It wasn't Purdue and UConn. Is Calipari? Yeah, John. I mean, John Calipari. His timing is just perfect. Well, he, I mean, they could beat the opening round. He's been at, he's he, he's been in the UK forever, and he, he's he's you know had a couple bad years lately, and he gets 
you know, the proverbial vote of confidence from his A V his A D, his his college uh, chancellor, or, or you know, or whoever. And um he's he's never used to getting a vote of confidence. It's always, hey John, great job, man. Uh, you know, eight mil next year, good. I mean, you you know, you're gonna be good next year. He gets the proverbial vote of confidence. Well, and, and, We're gonna bring John Calipari back, right? John at the end of the day, John Calipari says, boom. <laughs> Arkansas opens up. Arkansas opens up because Eric Musselman takes the the Southern Cal job and Calipari goes to Arkansas. Well, I will tell you for living for three years down there in Southern Indiana, and Scott, you can vouch for this too. There is a six-week period as, as soon as Kentucky loses where there's a season that nobody else has. It's the fire Calipari season because he's got to go because he didn't win. And it goes for about six six weeks. Uh, Purdue had it the last couple of years. You know, the get rid of Painter, he's not the right guy. And and it finally gets over about Memorial Day. I don't but, think anybody serious was was actually wanting no, Matt to get fired. But, but, but that's just but that's just the base down there in in. Uh, in, but you uh, get the in, you, you get the crazy people that call into Kentucky Sports Radio in yeah, Lexington. Blue, blue and, down there in Lexington. I mean, that was. We were close enough. That's all you hear about. Cal Perry's got to go. Yeah, Cal and, Perry's got to go. And, and, and that so, was going on ten years ago when we were down there. And so and so he beats the posse. Good. I mean, good for Cal Perry, man. I think it's a great. Story. I mean, he's always been about he's he, he's been about money. He's he's been about making the big salary. He, he he's about you know the NIL. So so he goes to Arkansas. So and, uh, Jerry and, Jones. And, he's yeah. got Jerry Jones the booster. He's got Sam Walton from sure. Walmart. And, think, and, think and, and the Tysons that own all the chicken. The chicken people. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, no. Yeah. I mean, Sam the, Walton's going to say, hey, hey, John, take your family to Walton. The pocket. I mean, Walmart. The pocket is as I deep get what in you Arkansas. Want. And somebody was mentioning today. That's a million times deeper in Maybe, Arkansas. He was the second most powerful SEC team for basketball. It's not Tennessee. It's not Alabama. It's not any of those people. You've got Kentucky, which is number one. The argument is. Is it Arkansas? Arkansas well, might be the second basketball program in that as far as support from the people. So he went from one deep pocket to another. No, and, and think about it. He gets to reinvent himself. He can get rid of the one and done. He can go out and do what Dion did at Colorado, go out and create his own team. He, he can take the two or three people from Kentucky that he wants. The rest of them are on their own. He can bring in juniors and seniors from everywhere. And and he can have a team that can compete with UConn next year. Well, I, I hope he's a little bit more humble than Dion was about it, uh, well, because at the end of the day, Dion goes four and eight. He's got to eat a little bit of crow, because Dion is saying, "I'm going to take this. I'm going to take everybody by surprise. We're four and zero. Oh. Dion, you didn't play anybody, man. You're four and zero. Oh. And it's because Dion had to go find twenty twenty five yeah, players. No. We're here. You only he's got to find five. five. He's got to yeah. find five or six. Now here's the question. Who who's going to replace John Calipari? I'm going to give you some names. Nate Oaks. I, I think Nate Oaks. You think? I think this Maybe. is a. Maybe. I think this is a real name here. I think if Billy Donovan wants to get back to uh, the college game, mm-hmm. I think Billy Donovan could be a name. Well, will Jay Wright want to get back in the game? I don't know. I, I don't know why no. he would because I don't, I don't think he wants to mess with the with the the behind the scenes. Yeah, his things. his blood pressure is probably pretty good now. Mm-hmm. I I don't think Chris Beard's leaving Ole, Ole Miss. I mean, I I I mean, I think he had a pretty good year. I don't think Dan. I don't think Danny Hurley is going to leave UConn. Do you? No, I don't. No. Think, I don't think his brother's. Even, I th- he's an East Coast guy. Yeah. Now here, let me throw a name at you. Just to throw it up against the wall. Thanks. Do you bring Patino back? They were talking about bringing him back at Louisville. Do you bring him? No. Do you bring Patino back to Kentucky? No, I'm too I, old. I, I'm just asking. Exactly because I, I I do believe this. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I do believe with NIL and all this, it's a young man's game. I mean, I mean, I really do. I okay. I think, and 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 I've so got another name when you get done. If they if they were to bring Rick Pitino back, they would have to have four Assist- tremendous assistants. Uh-huh. Who, who I agree. okay? Who's your other name? Bruce Pearl. I, I mean, I don't I I don't know. I mean, Brad I thought, Brunel, I thought, I I mean, thought Brad Bruce, Pearl, at I thought Bruce Pearl would be a good fit at Louisville. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean what about Red Arbach? Oh, no. He's I, not, like, I like, I like, I would not surprise Bill Russell. Pearl's name. 
Bruce Pearl. <laughs> He's I, you're a smart ass. Man. I like the Billy like, Donovan. Just like me, man. Hey, I'm right. I'm hungry. Hey, I, hey, I think hey, it's hey, gonna be uh, Nate Oates or, or Bruce Pearl. Yeah, no, I, I think I think Nate Oates would be great, but he just signed a huge contract in Alabama. I mean, the great chill. I mean, Eddie yep. Schilling ends up at Pepperdine. Yes, I saw that. That's one of our guys. He's, ends been, up si- at he's Pepperdine. been sitting on the bench with Alford, right, at, at Nevada? Yeah, I yeah. And, and so so Josh Schertz, and by the way, we would be remiss for not congratulating the Sycamores. Wasn't that fun to watch On them? a great run that they had and winning that NIT and saying and stuffing it up. That selection committee's rear end. <laughs> well, both teams too. Yeah, Seton no, Hall exactly. did the same thing. And, and it and it's interesting. I had to watch those games on this very computer because my TVs in Mexico had no networks. Yeah. So Scott set me up on YouTube, and uh, we actually got to watch the game uh, live on uh, ESPN, and then we got to watch the uh, the Purdue game during the week as well. So we got to watch. And, I yeah, mean, I, those I, are the only things we watch. We couldn't watch the news, nothing, but we did see Indiana. Well, State I mean, and, I mean, I'm kind of, un, I'm upset for Indiana State standpoint because Josh Schurz comes in there, just does a great job, gets those guys playing. I mean, gets, I mean, really good players in there. And now, and now he bolts for the University of St. Louis. And, 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 and I don't blame him because it's probably three or four it's times time more of the salary. What else is he going to be able to do? Yeah, Indiana no, exactly. State. Scott Hetty. Uh, the head coach at Marion University takes the, the University of Indianapolis head job. The Indianapolis coach went to IUPUI, which is now going to be called Uni- Indy, yes. IU Indy. They, yeah, they're but, changing their name, so he moved up a step. Here's the great one, though. Duquesne now, that, now, that de- now that degree just became worthless. <laughs> <Yeah>, okay. <laughs> All right. All right, and for you, and you, and for you, IU fans, that's our producer Scott yeah. King. But listen, I think this is a great one. Uh, Duquesne University, Keith Dambrot was the head coach of Duquesne. Uh, Keith Dambrot was the head coach of Central Michigan for a while, was the head coach of Akron, was the head coach at Akron St. Mary's mm-hmm. where LeBron James played. Right. And on on Keith Dambrot's staff at Duquesne was one of uh, LeBron's former high school teammates, Drew Joyce III. And, and uh, LeBron and Drew played high school ball together, best of friends. So now – uh, Bronny James is leaving USC now. Now, and I, I mean, I don't understand this. He he averaged four points a game for USC, right? But he's going to declare for the NBA draft. Yes. Now you you've scored four points a game at USC. You, you've you've had a heart condition. I understand that. I think that played a little bit of a slow start at, at, at USC. But you're not ready to play in the NBA. And the only reason you, you, that you would think you would be is because of your last name. Mm-hmm. But now with Drew Joyce, LeBron's best friend, going to Duquesne, the uh, rumor mayor is is all afloat with Bronny James now in and, the portal and going to take his name out of the NBA and go play at Duquesne. Go play at Duquesne in Pittsburgh. Why not? Or Ohio and, State. And if, and, if LeBron, and if LeBron doesn't like the way he's playing – I, I can see this. Hey, Drew, this is LB. What's up, man? <laughs> hey, listen, you know that 10 mil I gave for the program last week? I'm taking half of it back unless <laughs> Bronny gets some shots. I need, yeah, he needs more PT. Yeah, hey, I want to thank the Black Sedan Band. Their music is phenomenal. I want to thank Scott. Scott, you've done a great job. This was this was an awesome show tonight. Uh, Allison Hayes was great. Uh, we busted you up a little bit up on your trip to Mexico, but part of it, I mean, seriously though, I'm so glad that you and your wife had a chance to get away and enjoyed that a little bit. And, and, and really the big thing is I mean, there ain't no TV. Yeah. So you and your wife go up to the room. Hey, hey, let's put on Magnum PI. Ain't no TV. You and your he, wife got to converse he, and have a great time. Man. I, I actually had to talk to her. Yeah, no. Exactly. Hopefully she's not listening. <laughs> he didn't say that, Becky. He, he, I said it, Becky. He she didn't had, say it. No, she had to talk to me. There that was, you that go. Was, that's more like it. And, Here, and I just, she, I got a, uh, I got a, I got a comment from Q that I got to throw up on here because he's, right. he's, he's, he's about as, he's about as ride or die as they get for us. Right. Uh, he said the, the fire Cal season had more than enough ammo this year. Cal's recent track record in the, and March Madness, they haven't won a tournament game in four years and haven't won it all in 12. That's enough for Kentucky. And I mean, I, I agree with that. I mean, because people forget because it's it's the popular thing to make fun of Purdue for losing to double j- digit seeds. But uh, 
if if memory serves me correctly, uh, St. Peter's beat Kentucky before they beat Purdue, and it yeah. wasn't like Purdue lost to him in the first round. That was in the second weekend. And 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 if memory serves me correct, uh, Purdue's in the national championship game tonight, right? Yep. They get knocked out by Fairfield in a one sixteen matchup, mm-hmm. right? And, and the following year, everybody. I mean. I mean, a lot of people said, hey, man, Matt Payne, great, great regular season, wins the Big Ten, can't get it done, gets upset by a 16 seed. Well, what are we going to do at Purdue? Well, what you're going to do at Purdue is, is is stay the course and let Matt Painter coach him up because that's what he does. And now they're in the national championship game. Who you got? Who you, I'm throwing you on the spot. Well, who I'm, you got tonight? I'm taking UConn because right. that's who I took last week because you t- you were going to take Purdue. I'm going with Purdue for the simple reason that they got to they got to defend Zach Eady. Okay. And right. once once you turn your defense over to defend him, now 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 they may say, "Hey, Zach, get 30. We don't think anybody else can beat us." Mm-hmm. And that might be their defense too. I, I mean, I don't know, but I think it's going to be a great game. Danny Hurley, great coach. Matt Painter, great coach. Uh, I think it's going to be, be a great the, game. I think it's going to be one of the best games we've had in years. That's what I'm hoping for. And it's, it's yep. We're we're getting ready to go watch it right now because if we're, Braden we're, Smith scores more than three points and <laughs> limits turnovers, if 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 Braden yeah, plays tonight the way he did Saturday, Purdue's going to lose by twenty five. But if if he I, can, and I think this is this is the game where Braden and, and he knows gets, gets on the map. I think so. He knows that. Yep. I mean, my my heart says Purdue, my head says UConn, just because I think Stephon Castle and uh, Tristan Newton are that that good, but. I mean, who knows if the? I mean, it's like what Painter's been saying all weekend. If they limit the turnovers and rebound, I mean, they're they're as good as yeah. anybody else. This is this is like the fifth time I saw it on Reddit earlier. This is the fifth time, and I think in like twenty five years that the truly the two best teams have played for the national yeah. title. So I think regardless, it'll be it'll be long a long time one. since they've had a one and a one in the finals. Hey, hey, I mean, to our listeners tonight, thanks for Thank uh, tuning in. We've had a great time. Great to have you back in the states, back big boy. It. And we'll do uh, this again next week. We'll we'll chat it up next week. More baseball. Uh, we'll talk about this championship game a little bit, and uh, we'll we'll find some things. I uh, I'm thinking maybe by next week we'll we'll have some turnover in Indiana high school basketball, yeah. right? Coaching I think that in the coaching the ranks. Coaching ranks will start to change around here too. Yeah. yeah. All I right. Hey, so. thanks for tuning in, Scott. You're the best man. Uh, yep. We'll see you guys next week. Leroy picked Purdue. Okay. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Inside my car, I got the picture standing up a lovable man, and I can take you to the nearest star.